Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. Now today's video is part two on removing and replacing the solenoid pack on the Chrysler 6-speed front-wheel drive transaxle, also known as a 62TE. If you haven't had a chance to watch part one, go back and check it out first. But for now, let's go ahead and continue with removing and replacing it. So grab your new solenoid pack. Now, just so you can quickly know where to position it, remember this little black connector goes onto that white one right there that we're worried about breaking. So that way you know you got it positioned correctly. Kind of sit it down on there. You may have to slide it around a little bit until it actually fully seats. Again, using our hands, we're gonna squeeze everything together. We're gonna flip it over. We're gonna go ahead and install some of those fasteners. Now I don't recommend using any cordless or air powered tools for running those Torx bolts down. Just grab your T25 and the extension and let's do it by hand. So now that we've got the fasteners ran down by hand, now it's time to follow back up with a torque wrench. Now there is a spec for these fasteners, but there is no particular pattern you need to follow as far as which one's first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. So what I would say to that is, just kind of alternate using the crisscross method. Now the spec for the fasteners is 53 inch pounds. 53 inch pounds on the solenoid pack T25 Torx. Go back and forth until you got them all torqued down the specs. So once we're done with that, we're just going to flip it over. We're going to go ahead and plug in those connectors that we disconnected before. We've got the solenoid over here, the one that toad usually breaks. Just be gentle, install it until you hear the click. Same thing over here. And just slide the connector down until you hear the click. At that point, we've got that secondary lock that we've got to engage. And you're just going to press down on that. That one's ready to go. Now, before we go installing the valve body back on the transmission, remember we've got those six blue o rings on that transfer pipe that we need to replace. Also, make sure it's fully seated. Another thing you need to pay attention to, per the service info, is this 2 4 clutch oil seal. To be honest with you, I don't really know why they want you to replace it, but they state that it's one of the items in the steps for reinstalling everything that's required. So I'm gonna leave that up to you. So if you decide on replacing it, grab every pair of needle nose, reach on in here, squeeze and grab and pull it out. You get your new one, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of transmission fluid on the O-ring right here. Just insert it back in the bore and push it till it's fully seated. Now we're ready to go ahead and install the valve body. Now when we go to install the valve body, remember we gotta pay attention to that little pin on the valve. It needs to go inside the trans range sensor and we need to make sure that the tubes are properly lined up. So the best way is kinda of go in at an angle, get your pin in the appropriate groove, and then kinda of tilt the valve body towards the trans case. Now using two hands, we're gonna gently lower the valve body down and try to get that pin in that groove. Remember, try not to break that range selector. Now we can start maneuvering the valve body so those three tubes start lining up. And once we've got the tubes inserted into the valve body, now we just gotta kinda wiggle it until it actually lines up. Actually sits flush. Now we can grab all our fasteners and start inserting them into the appropriate holes. So looking at it real close, you'll see that we've got some holes right here. Now these are too small for the fasteners to go through. The ones we're looking for are these right here. If you look really close, you can see how the head of the bolt actually kind of made a circle on the aluminum. That's how you know which ones you need to be using. We've got a lot of them. Let's go ahead and install them. And then again, we're gonna tighten them down by hand. We're gonna come back and we're gonna torque it down the specs. Now all the fasteners for the valve body are the same length, so we don't have to worry about if there's any short ones, long ones, and where they need to go. Pick the appropriate hole and then start inserting them. 
Now once you've got all the fasteners ran down by hand, again, it's time to torque those down as well. Now the spec for that is 53 inch pounds. Same thing as the solenoid pack. 53 inch pounds for all the valve body fasteners. And again, there is no set pattern you need to follow. Just do a crisscross method. So now that we've got all the valve body bolts torqued to that 53 inch pounds, we're gonna jump down to this range sensor. Now currently it's just moving all over the place. Now if you remember that D10 I showed you earlier that has the roller on there, another one of its jobs is to keep that range sensor in a specific location. Now there's a little notch or groove right there. We're gonna grab that roller portion of the detent, insert it into that. Now we're gonna kinda of position it over and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna line up the hole here for our T25 special fastener. As you can see, it's got a little, it's got a head up here and then it's got a collar or a sleeve portion that's kind of wider than the diameter of the threads. So it's a special fastener and that's where it's gonna be going is this hole right here. Now when we go to install this detent, you need to be careful on what you're doing here. This little end right here, the hook portion, needs to go on the outside edge of the valve body. You don't want to line things up, start your bolt, tighten it down the way it is right now because it's going to squeeze this in, flatten it, and damage it. Now it's going to be a little hard to get on. Now what I do right here is I go ahead and install it in the range sensor, position it over, and I get that bolt, that special fastener, and I try to install it. Obviously it's at an angle right now, but we want to kind of get it to stand straight up as much as possible so we don't cross thread it. Now I can grab that range sensor, I can kind of pull. That kind of gives me the ability to line it up better. I can start a few threads. At this point, I'm not too worried about it being perfect because the bolt is straight and that's the main thing I'm worried about. As I start tightening down this fastener, it's actually gonna go inside the hole of the detent. It's gonna force it over and line things up. Now the torque for this is again 53 inch pounds. Same torque specs that we've been having for everything else so far. So again, make sure you line this up properly. And if you do exactly as I mentioned, you'll see how this hook portion is on that side of the valve body. If I press down, you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So for now, I'm just gonna torque this down the spec. Now that we're done with that, last thing we need to do is plug the range sensor in. Make sure you don't forget this, otherwise you're going to be taking that trans pan right back off again after you try to start the vehicle and find that it's not working. Again, plug it in, be careful, line it up to you hear that snap. Now we can actually start working on cleaning that trans pan and getting it back on the transmission. Now if you remember, the trans side pan and the lower pan uses RTV, so there is no gasket. But we need to prep or clean the surface before we go back with the new RTV and install it on the transmission. Now there's a couple different tools I like to use. I've got a metal scraper right here that works great for a lot of the bigger pieces. Scrape it down. You can tear these off very easily. Now the other thing I like to use is a razor blade, but obviously if you're using a razor blade, you need to be extremely careful that you don't hurt yourself. And there's a technique that I use for that. I don't just go down like I did with the scraper. You can, but in this case, I like to put it on there and drag. As I drag it, it actually cleans the majority of all the surfaces. Now the other tool you can use is anything that's got an abrasive wheel on it. This is Milwaukee's cordless tool works beautifully, or you can use an air power tool, whatever works for you. Just kind of go around the edge. And like I said, I usually like to get the big pieces off first, and then you can always come back and follow it up with this. Now once we've got this surface all nice and clean, we need to grab our rag, wipe down all the bigger pieces, Make sure we get those out of there. And then we're gonna follow it up with some brake clean and possibly even blow it out with some air because we don't want any of the smaller particles that's left over from cleaning it or anything from that abrasive wheel getting clogged up inside the transmission filter. We wanna keep that as clean as possible. So now that we've got the trans pan all nice and clean, 
we're ready to start applying our bead of RTV around the perimeter. Now, let me just throw this out there. We're not cake decorators, so don't put a half inch blob or line around the perimeter. That's excessive. It's just going to be pushed out when we tighten down the fasteners. All you need is about an eighth of an inch wide line all the way around. And then what I like to do is I like to follow around where the bolt holes are as well. That's all you need. You don't need to go excessive with it. Now the last thing we need to do before we go reinstalling that trans pan is make sure that the surface around the perimeter that it's going to make contact with is clean as well. So if you need to scrape it, scrape it. Just be careful and don't let really anything fall inside the transmission. Usually you can get by with just a good wipe. But if that's not enough, again, you could use the razor blade. Just don't scratch the surface no more than you need to. Now, in some vehicles, it's tight getting that trans pan in and out of this area. You've got a radiator over here. You may have a frame rail over here, and you're trying to squeeze things in. Now, one thing you could have done before you put RTV on the pan was do a dry run. Get your procedure down. Like, I need to come up at an angle here, clear to go over and down whatever it is because some vehicles it's a lot easier some vehicles you kind of fight with and the last thing you want to do is smear RTV everywhere as you're trying to fight to get the pan in there again if you haven't done it already it's the best time to do your dry run at this point we're ready to go ahead and install it we don't have anything in the way while it's sitting here on the stand so we'll just kind of line things up and sit it down now before we go installing all the bolts around the perimeter, remember we had two different type of bolts. We had some short 8 millimeters, which we had a lot of, and then we had three 10 millimeter studded bolts. Remember those studded bolts held this cover on. Now, you need to look at your cover, make sure it's not damaged, because we do want to reinstall it. But if we find out that all the corners are messed up, or for some reason it's just falling apart, we can leave it off and it's not going to cause issues with the transmission. A lot of it is for sound deadening. In a perfect world, we want to install it, right? That's what I'm going to tell you, install it. But if for some reason you cannot install it, don't worry about it. Just keep moving forward and get all the fasteners in here. At that point, it doesn't really matter where those studded bolts are. But just for the sake of argument, look at the cover. We know we've got one right here, so we're going to put it there. Look around the corner here. We want there and there. So that's what we need to install them if everything's fine. That way we can start laying things out before we put the cover on. Now one last thing I want to point out before we go installing those trans pan bolts is you need to take a look at the end here. Now when we put that bead of RTV on the pan and we put the pan on the transmission, some of the RTV gets squeezed out. Some of it goes in the bolt holes. You know there's an acceptable amount that's not going to cause problems. But what happens is, if we use these old bolts that have some of that RTV or dried up RTV on the end of it, that's when we run into problems. Some of the holes may be drilled all the way through, that's not a problem. Some of the holes are dead ended. So you can only compact so much new and old RTV in there. And if you were to tighten it down, one of two things is going to happen. You may strip the threads out, or worst case scenario, you will crack the trans case. It's happened to me, I've seen it happen to other people. Again, if you've got this right here, check all your bolts and tear off that OTAR TV. Now you can go ahead and install this and don't have to worry about damaging anything. Now for those of you wanting a spec for the transpan bolts, it's nine foot-pounds. Nine foot-pounds on the valve body pan bolts and then also the one on the bottom where the filter is. So if you remove that as well, clean it up the same way I showed you, make sure there's no RTV on those bolts, reinstall, and again, tighten all the fasteners around the perimeter to nine foot-pounds. So if your cover's still intact, go ahead and slide it down over the dipstick tube, kind of work your way around, goes all the way on, press it down, make sure the studded bolts are coming through, and again, because we had to cut this off before as far as the fasteners that were there, all we're going to be using some washers and appropriate size nuts to go on those studded bolts. We'll tighten those down and it's the same thing as those fasteners that it previously came with. It'll hold it just as well. And the last couple things we got to deal with are installing any brackets that we removed before 
and also those trans lines that we actually took loose and repositioned, they need to be reinstalled. Now other than test driving the vehicle, the next to the last thing we've got to do is we need to make sure that we've got fluid in the transmission. If you drop that lower pan and replace the filter like I talked about in the beginning, you're going to need to start out with four quarts of ATF4. If you did the basic repair procedure and didn't drop the lower pan, we still need to check the fluid level to see how much we may have lost. Now, we talked about the dipstick tube. This cap right here, guess what? There's no dipstick. So to check the fluid level is gonna be a bit of an issue. If you look up here in the corner of the video, I'm gonna give you a link. I'm gonna show you how you can check this fluid level, what it needs to be, and how you can do it without buying the special tool that's required. Once we get that done, all we need is the final test drive. So that right there pretty much sums up everything you need to know for removing and replacing the solenoid pack. I gave you torque specs. I showed you step by step what you need to do and also gave some warnings and things to look out for so that you don't have any issues. Now one final thing I want to point out and that is to get the best shift quality out of this transmission after doing that repair you need to do what they call a quick learn. Now for quick learn you need to have a high-end scanner that means something expensive or you need to take it to a repair shop or to the dealer and they're going to have the ability to perform that quick learn. Now the quick learn is going to allow it to have smoother shifts. Now it's not a do or die thing. You can get by without doing it. But again, if you want the smoothest, best shift quality for this transaxle, the quick learn is the way to go. So if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you get any comments about anything you saw in this series, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can leave something in the comments below, or you can email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com. Also, if you like to shop on Amazon, please scroll down into the comments or the description of this video. There's a link. Click on that link, make it your homepage for Amazon. And anytime you buy something, it'll help support this channel. Once again, everybody, thanks for watching.